This is his day, and we are his. And it is our privilege to be able to give affection and love to him. And so that's what we were just doing. And uh, if you felt like, man, I could just worship so much more and just love on God some more, then uh, this is a good day for you because right after the service here today, we have what we call our afterglow service, and that is our extended worship time. And so if you want, you're welcome to stay for that. Uh, we'll have an official, official dismissal in your anyone who... Uh, wants to head out you're welcome to but for anyone who wants to stay we'll uh, drop the lights down a little bit and go back into some more time of loving on God and so so thankful to have uh, a real strong contingent of people that refuse to simply perform and go through the motions but people that really have a heart to worship and love him and so uh, we want to make room and expression for that in our design of, of how we function as a church, and so every first and third Sunday we have our afterglow service, and then every second and fourth Sundays we have an after service hangout, and, and you're invited to bring some snacks and, and uh, hang out after the service, and in and, and, uh, church language, it's food and fellowship, and, uh, but uh, that happens on those days. And so we're just trying to be mindful of some of these areas that we can just plug in and get connected with. And so um, <clears throat> I haven't said this yet, but my name is Benjamin, and my wife Micah is back over here. And uh, we are the pastors of Convergence Center, and very glad that you are here with us and what God is doing. Say hey to those that are joining us online on our YouTube channel. Some people watch us live. And uh, I'm glad uh, Mary Ann is here. She was one you guys didn't know, but she was working for quite a while uh, but, and wasn't able to come in person, but she was able to watch us online. And so she was some church family that uh, viewed us on our YouTube channel. We have other people like that as well that watch us on YouTube either live or later on. And just so you guys know, that's happening on our YouTube channel. And uh, it's a good way just to stay connected. If you guys want to share those on your uh, social media, as uh, those are saved each week, you can share those and encourage and help somebody else's day uh, if it encouraged you. So, Marianne, glad that you're able to work it out and be here. So glad that you're with us now. Uh, <clears throat> um, well, we had a painting that was happening over here. Some of you might have noticed that. And uh, this is another way that we worship God here at Convergence Center, as several of you know. But uh, I often tell my church family here, and I know we have some that are traveling because it's summertime and we get the traveling itch to go places, uh, but uh, we like to, I, I, I say some things over and over again, and if you already know what I'm saying, then I'm not talking to you. <laughs> and so we have, we have a design sometimes in churches where uh, we forget about people who don't know why you're doing what you're doing. And so in worship, we worship God, we show our affection to God in all kinds of different ways. And so we had some flags that were being waved over here, and those represent certain attributes of God or just even pouring out affection of God. You might have seen some people dancing before God, and uh, the Bible tells us that it's good to dance. Get your groove on for Jesus. Even if you're a little offbeat, it's okay. All right, so we like to dance before the Lord or clap or lift our hands. These are all different ways we're showing love. And over here we have painting. We serve a creative God. I mean, he made you, so he's pretty creative. And so we have uh, creativity is one of the ways that we like to love on God. And Lori painted this. Lori, could you join me over here? Because uh, as we worship God, there's, there's this exchange that happens uh, where it, it, it doesn't have to be this way. Just grab that microphone from here. It doesn't have to be this way, but God does it where many times where you're loving on God and you experience God in some way. And uh, some of you might have experienced peace or got goosebumps all over you or had a vision in your mind or you saw something happen or whatever the case may be. Many times when we're loving on God, it's like he hugs us back. And I think about my children. I have a six-year-old. When she hugs me, I don't sit there and go, thank you. I deserve that. Yeah. But I wrap my arms around her and I love on her as well. And, and sometimes we think about God like we worship him, and he sits on his throne and says, thank you, I deserve that. No, the Bible says that God rejoices over us, that he spins wildly and sings and dances over you. He picks you up and spins you around, and, and sometimes 
You know, we have this being that lives in more dimensions than we exist in, or at least that we can comprehend. Uh, and scientists believe that there are at least 10 dimensions, or could be more that we don't even know about, but there's at least 10, and we experience about four of them consciously. And so we have this being that lives in these other realms, and when he touches into our dimensions that we can experience, then certain things can happen to us where we experience this extra-dimensional being we call God in certain ways, and some of those are where we feel peace or we feel God's presence or other things. It's like him giving us a hug back. And so anyway, as we're worshiping with creativity, we have a, a venue where God loves people back. And that's where he shares something from his heart for somebody else, a message from him for somebody else, and that person can actually take the painting home. So Lori's going to share who this is for and what God was saying about it. Thanks, Lori. Good. Pastor Ben, you are so prophetic, because everything you were saying was what I was feeling when I was up there painting. Uh. <laughs> you know, I started out with something different. I, I drew in some people worshiping at the bottom with pencil before I started, and some were laying down, and some were just resting with their heads on their knees, and all this different stuff, and I got up to paint, and I didn't paint that. But I, I felt like God was saying his spotlight was on our worship today. And so that's the first thing I did that um, I felt like he, his pleasure was all over us while we were worshiping. And I felt like all the, and uh, the worship leader was singing about fountains springing up and that just started inspiring my I feel like every person expresses God in a different way whether you're sitting there quietly or you're dancing exuberantly or whether you're flagging or whatever it is the Lord finds pleasure in you and then when we're all together I read the scripture that was on the wall when I came in here about every joint supplying uh what every person needs and you know that's how we're built up in the body of Christ I feel like there's every every person is so unique like a different color of a rainbow a different aspect of God mm -hmm. and as I I drew the things coming up from the bottom and then I felt to put the different colors of uh, what was going up to God coming down the different colors because God has so many aspects and I just feel like God's pleasure was all over us. However you were worshiping him today, he was really pleased with it. And um, I really didn't get a person that I wanted to give it to. Maybe prophetic man will pick the person <laughs> for me. <laughs> well, uh, okay. The lady that I don't know your name, I don't, with the um, brown hair and a bun on your head. Yes, I don't like to point. What's your name? Joanne. So I feel like the Lord's pleasure is all over you, and he likes your expression of worship, and he just adores you, and he just wants to bless you today. And I, I believe that when I paint, that God uh, puts something in it, and I believe you're going to keep receiving from that every time you look at it. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. That's so good. All right, if anybody's interested in being a part of art, let us know. Uh, we'll show you how you can do that later. But we have uh, several different ways, uh, several different areas where we can serve in our body here and uh, just uh, be a part of things. So you don't have to have gone to school to be a part of the art team. You can draw stick people if you want. All kinds of different ways. So uh, for our first-time guests, I want to let you know that we have a personalized gift for you, and it is an art piece, not that size, but we have an art piece for you on the way out today. So we'll make sure if you uh, want to pick that up before you go, uh, then you can take that with you. And Joanna Corsette is yours. You can take it with you after the service today. All right. Well, <clears throat> we had a, uh, a new thing that began, and I just wanted to say that I, I believe that as a ministry, as a church family, we're entering into a new season. And the season that we're entering into is one of exposure where uh, our ministry has been hidden for too long. And so I just want us to uh, just feel like God has called us into a time where uh, people will know that we exist in the area because they need to meet you. 
They do. They need to make, meet the amazing people that call Convergence Center their home uh, and encounter the love. See, this is our dream. Our dream, the reason that we exist as Convergence Center is that it would be impossible to live in our region and not encounter the love of God. That's why we exist. That's why we do what we do and the things that we're a part of. And so now we're entering into a time we're just believing that God is uh, raising up Convergence Center in a way that will position it to bring significant touch in people's lives where they encounter God's love. That they can never end their life and say, I never encounter God's love. Not on our watch. I'm glad I'm excited about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> not on our watch. It's not okay for people to exist around us and not encounter God's love. All right? And so we're beginning that just stage as a ministry. And so you're making room for some people to come in here who they don't know what worship means or what you're supposed to say or not say. They're not familiar with some things. And uh, we're just making room for ourselves. And God is positioning how we function and things we're a part of as a church uh, for those things. We're going to get into that a little bit today. But I want to play something here in just a second that's helping us bring some exposure. And we've been telling you about it, and we weren't able to play it last week because we're actually still tweaking some things on it. But starting uh, a couple days ago on Friday, uh, for the next couple of months, we have a 30-second video clip of introducing Convergence Center to our region. And they're expecting several thousand people. How many are they expecting? About 40,000 people to see our 30-second clip uh, over the next couple of months, okay? And so we're also asking for some favor with the, and if you want to be a part of this, we might end up needing to do something with it ourselves, but uh, what I'm trying to do, I'm calling this video our, our, our one touch, and I want to do a second touch and have a couple of days within the next couple of months where we do something else to touch people at the movie theater. And this is a Camp Hill Theater. And uh, what we want to do with that is where we buy uh, either some things at concession. So they go up to buy a soda and they're like, this is already bought for you. And we give them a card saying, this is bought for you from Convergence Center. Make sure you look for their video clip. Or another option we might do is buy down tickets that are evening tickets where they will equal a matinee price. So somebody goes over on this certain day and they are just going to go watch whatever movie they're going to watch and they find that uh, it doesn't cost, you know, $20 or whatever they do. Movies are pretty expensive. We buy them down to the, what their matinee price is. So anyway, we're working on some of those things and uh, we're giving into this. We're sewing into uh, reaching people. This is one way we're going to start reaching people. So this is our video clip. You guys ready? All right, a couple of people ready. You guys ready? This is our video clip. Go ahead. I want to experience something real. I have honest questions about God, and I want intelligent answers. I want to be healed. I want a family. I want donuts. I want a church I can understand. There you go. That's our video clip. Yeah, and so we, we have some people making their debut on this video clip where thousands of people will be seeing you guys are now famous. <laughs> Great acting. Good job. So glad you guys did. And uh, a, a special thanks to uh, Dr. Reverend Awesome Amazing Alex White who wrote this. He worked very diligently on this, and uh, it was fun being able to work with him on this project. Really, really brilliant. And so I want to just take a moment and pray for this, and then we'll move on with this next thing. But that's you guys. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you so much that you are worth getting excited about, that joy exists because you made it. <laughs> We thank you for who you are and the lives that you're, you're touching all over this region. And we ask for, we just commit this uh, project into your hands. And we think of how you sent 
the disciples ahead of you in the places, Jesus, you were going to minister to get the word out. And we think of John the Baptist who was sent to prepare the way that all of the, these were different ways that you had uh, advertising that happened in your name, getting the word out about you. And so, Lord, as we look at advertising, the fellowship you've called us to be here, we ask that it would just be touched with your presence in a way that causes people to say, you know, I think I need to check that out. So, Father, we thank you for that, God, for touching people and helping them because you have a plan for their life. You're absolutely crazy in love with them, and we are too. So we just think you're right about them and bless them, and we welcome them into our family here. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, cool. Well, we're starting a new series today. If you take your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. Now, those that are in church family, you know that if you're quiet and just stare at me, the sermons go longer and longer. I enter more into my southern roots, and I start talking slower. So, uh, feel free to give uh, amen, which means that's a good word, pastor. That's the technical Greek uh, definition of that. Just kidding. And uh, hallelujah, that's good. Come on, preach it. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go, Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, I'm going to read verse 11 and 12 and skip over to verse 16. 11 and 12 and I'll skip to 16, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And this is a, a little more modern wording here, so here we go. Now these, gift, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. He makes the whole, this is verse 16, He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. All right, I want to take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Bible. I thank you for your word captured in print. We bless it and honor and ask that you would help us to understand it and give us the power and the ability to live it out. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, we're starting a new season that's going to carry us through the month of May. We're going to take a look at something, and this uh, particular series of messages is called Get Connected. Everybody say, get connected. Yeah, look at somebody and say, get connected. All right, so this is the beginning. That's what our series is called. Today is called Two or Better. That's what we're looking at today. And we're going to get here in just a minute to uh, the passage. I'm going to come back to that. Uh, but I want to look at another verse and kind of use that as a platform to come back to the, verse we just, the verses we just opened with. In Luke chapter 14... In verse 28, the Bible says this, Luke 14, 28, For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? All right, so the context of this verse in Luke is Jesus is talking about uh, becoming one of his followers, okay? And some of our vernacular would be becoming a Christian or a follower of Christ, okay? And so the, the context is, where Jesus is saying that I'm not promising you if you come and follow me that everything's going to be easy and all, everyone's going to like you and you're going to be the best looking person around and have the most talents and everything's going to go your way all the time. You know, there are some people that give their life to Jesus just because they want their life to get better and just because they want God to do something for them. And, it, and the, the reality is when we're in relationship with God, you can have a lot of really great things that happen. Okay, that's the truth. Many times we see people that have their lives completely transformed because they're following the ways of the Creator, the one who actually designed how things are supposed to function. We begin to do things His way, and then we get to begin to see things happen the way they were designed to happen. So there is kind of a, an elevation of life that takes place when people follow Christ. However, if we come into following Christ because we think God is obligated to make our lives easier, then we are missing what 
Jesus is really all about. We're coming to serve him. He, he, he didn't come and give his life for us so that he could come and serve us. This is his kingdom. This is his world. He has a plan. And my point is not trying to suggest that life falls apart and everything is horrible and falling. And my point is the, that when Jesus was telling people, come and follow me, he wasn't saying, I'm going to take care of all your problems and everything's going to go easy all the time. Count your costs. If you're going to follow me, sometimes the, Jesus said uh, that in this world you're going to have trouble. That it's just a part of it. Don't be surprised by it. And so we have people that leave following Jesus. They actually have their faith shipwrecked because they enter into a difficult time and think that God was supposed to make life easier for them. And so now uh, they are offended at God. And so Jesus said, I, I don't want you to get this thing wrong and think if you enter a hard time, it's my fault. <laughs> I'm telling you ahead of time. Count the cost. This costs you everything. That if you're going to follow Jesus, you're not tagging him onto your life. You're giving him your life. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> All right, so we are giving him our lives. The Bible says we're entering into covenant which is a powerful thing, which really means that uh, his enemies become our enemies and our enemies become his. That all that is his is ours and all that is ours is his. This is what covenant means. And so Jesus says, if you want to follow me, think about what you're doing, that you're giving your life to him. Now, that's the context of it. That's not what we're talking about this morning. Uh, but I want to make sure that I kept it in context so we, we honored what Scripture said. What I want to do is there is a principle here within this scripture in Luke that I think we can draw out is really important and that is the principle of planning for success so in Luke chapter 14 verse 28 says that the person sits down and calculates something they're they're planning this thing out to make sure they could do it all right so I gave you the context of what it's really about but there's a principle here you can draw out and that is about planning uh, <clears throat> Once somebody said, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. That uh, planning is an important part of seeing success happen. I'll give you an example. I have here a fan blade from our girls' room. And uh, can, if you take a look at it, it has some issues. Uh, a little while back, we decided that uh, we were going to decorate our girls' room. And so we had this idea of uh, there are four walls, and we were going to make each wall a different season. And so you had summer and winter and fall, spring, that kind of thing. And that each wall would have decorations and painting on it and things that related to those particular seasons. And, and I decided, hey, look, there's a fan on the ceiling. I'll make it the sun. So I decided I was going to make the ceiling fan a sun. And so I took the blades off, and, and I, uh, it already had some paint on it, and I figured, well, I'll just put some primer on top of that and put some yellow paint on top of that, and we'll be all set, done. And so I got the primer put on that, painted over it, and it didn't work. You can't see it really well, but it cracked all through. Uh, I had all, all through the thing, it all cracked. And so... Uh, I decided I, I'm going to try to remove the paint and start over. And so I got some, uh, you know, some sand, not sand, but um, sandpaper. And I was trying to sand things off and get it ready to paint again, and it wasn't working fast enough. <laughs> but I had this little rotary machine. And so I... It has, little, it has a little attachment on it that has sandpaper on it. And so I put the little rotary machine on, turn that bad boy on, and, man, it just started cutting through this thing so fast. And then when I took a closer look at it, I found out it didn't just take the paint off. It was digging down inside of the fan blade. And so it completely ruined. It's got grooves all the way down into the blade itself. Uh, completely bared down into the wood 
underneath. That's what the original blade looked like. It was way down past that into the original wood, ripped it apart. And so what happened is uh, I thought, this isn't a big deal. You just throw some primer and some paint on it, and it turned into this bigger fiasco than I thought it was going to be because I didn't take the time to really think through and plan out What's it going to take? Go ask somebody, talk, you know, try to figure out, you know, how can I make this thing look like a sun? So now we're at the place where we have to buy new fan blades <laughs> and see if we can just paint those or something like that. Because this right here is not going to work. It's too beat up and gone. And now, when it, when it comes to Christ, when it comes to Jesus, uh, when God created the world, he didn't say, you know what, let's just wing it. Let's put this thing together and see how it goes. No, the Bible tells us that Jesus was crucified at the foundation of the world. Before God created the world, he put into place the plan of redemption, the plan of Christ coming and dying on the cross and being raised from the dead. It, didn't, it wasn't something that, he, that surprised him along the way. It wasn't something he was like, oh, we better do something about this now. That it was, he planned this thing out where he knew that this was going to need to take place. He planned for success when it came to what Jesus was all about. He planned it out and wasn't surprised by it. And when it comes to the church, when it comes to, really when it comes to living the life that Jesus died for us to live, the Bible shows us that God had a plan. He didn't get the church started and go, uh, we'll wing it. Let's just see what happens. Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead. Let's see how they do. But he actually had a goal. He had something in mind for how we are to live and some things that he wanted to be able to see. And I think, uh, really, the verses that we started out with help to show some of the things that God planned, some of the goals that he's had. And if we begin to align ourselves with the plan of God, then we begin to uh, live in a way that makes God's best possible for our lives. Thank you. That was good. And so, with that in mind, I want to take a few minutes and just look at these verses here together. Because uh, really what I want to do is I want to park on these verses uh, for this month as we're looking at uh, Get Connected this month. Because as we get connected to God's plan and how his goals are and what his plan is, then we have that successful living that will, that will happen. So let me go back to these verses because I want to read them again. It might be a, a version that you're not familiar with, but I really like how it is said here. In verse 11 and 12, now these are the gifts, the gifts uh, Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility, everybody say responsibility. Their responsibility is to equip. See, God's got a plan. It's to equip God's people. Somebody say, that's me. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are so talkative today. <laughs> equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Verse 16. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. Somebody say, get connected. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Now, we want to park here for this month because we want to get connected with God's plan. God has an idea. He has a goal. He has a plan for uh, what is going to help us to live the life that Christ died for us to live. And one thing we look at right at the beginning of this particular verses that we looked at is that God has a role for leaders, okay? God has entrusted spiritual leadership with some responsibility. <laughs> so I want to just stay here for just a second. There's two things I'm highlighting basically this morning. One is, is that spiritual leadership is a part of the plan of God. 
There are some people within the church, people that, that are followers of Jesus, that uh, for whatever reason have come to believe that they're not supposed to be connected with spiritual leadership, that they are supposed, they, they can live their lives. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. I don't have to serve somewhere. I don't have to listen to anybody speak into my life. I have the Holy Spirit, and I can just read my Bible, and that is a life that is God's best for me, okay? I would suggest to you that you are stunting your spiritual maturity if you are not connected to spiritual leadership. I would suggest to you that you are stunting your, your spiritual maturity, your growth in the things of God, if you are not connected to spiritual leadership. The reason I say that is because there's a responsibility given to spiritual leadership. It is God's idea that through connection with spiritual leadership that there is something that happens. And what it says it happens is that the people of God are equipped to do the work of God, and they are built up. The responsibility that spiritual leadership has on its shoulders is to not do everything. <laughs> All right? If spiritual leadership does everything, then the people of God are actually being robbed. Because God has things inside of all of his people that matter. And so sometimes there's this mindset that the leadership of a church is responsible for everything. And if that is our mindset, that, it, we just, uh, that our place is just to show up. We just show up and we are just to get fed and press me and help me. And I want to make sure when I come in, everything is set up and everything is in place. And if it's not, it's your fault because you're a spiritual leader. And so what we've done is we've said all the responsibility is on the place of spiritual leaders. I would suggest to you that that is robbing our spiritual growth. We actually grow by serving. Thank you. We grow by being connected. We grow by laying our lives down for the gospel in a variety of ways. A leadership's job. In fact, the Bible says at one place that uh, some of the apostles said what we really need to do as leaders is devote our lives to prayer and to the word. If I had my dream, I would spend half a day in prayer and spend time with God for half a day. And then the, the rest of the half a day, I would spend ministering to people. That would be my dream job as a pastor. But there are other dynamics. <laughs> but the more that we as a people get connected and have ownership in our church family, the more we'll see growth happen in us and more we'll see lives that are touched. You guys okay? Yes. All right, now... Some people, some, some leadership have taken the idea of spiritual authority and leadership too far, and they've given it a bad name. I know of places where uh, people have had to uh, give all of their paycheck over to their local church, and they had to get permission before they did any major purchases, like cars or houses. They had to get permission to do those things, and they were given budgets for their clothes and uh, expenses and that kind of thing, okay? And so it's been from, you know, it, it's like one bad apple causes the whole barrel to be thrown out. We sometimes take, what you know, the phrase that you throw the baby out with the bath water. So you have one experience that happens, uh, and we take the whole idea and push it out. And so then we have people that 
say spiritual leadership is not supposed to be able to speak into my life. I'm not supposed to be able, I'm not supposed to be connected with spiritual leadership. I have the Holy Spirit. I can do this thing on my own. I have no res- real responsibility in this thing because they're just going to take advantage of me. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's this mindset that's reactionary according to those kind of things. Being a spiritual leader is not something you enter into lightly. And if anybody has experienced manipulation in some way from a spiritual leader, I want to apologize for that. They did not represent Christ. Uh, Christ came to serve. As a matter of fact, what those spiritual leaders did is they forgot the beginning of this, where it says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. Spiritual leadership, sometimes people have thought that people are called, that God called them into spiritual leadership to show how valuable they are. And so because of that showing how valuable they are, they think, because I'm called into this position, then those who are not are less valuable than I am. You need to come and serve me. Okay? And so they've they've forgotten that God didn't call you into ministry to show you how important you are. God called you into ministry to show other people how important they are. We are called to be gifts to others. If you're in a place of authority, you are a gift to someone else. So for the whole world, the demonstration of God's love has been shown by Jesus dying on the cross. God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to die for the cross, on the cross. God so loved this area, he sent you to live in it. Okay? And God so loved you that he called us to you. God loves you a lot. <laughs> called us all the way from Minnesota to Pennsylvania because he's crazy about you and knows that you really like bald heads. Isn't that right, William? <laughs> Amen. All right. So the, one of the places, when you have godly spiritual authority in your life and you're connected to that, it is a fertile soil for growth to happen. It becomes a safe place to grow, to experiment, to fail, to try. A, a spiritual leadership is, should be a place where it is an environment where you're challenged and encouraged and built up and that you are, in a sense, like a, a, the, the birds that are pushed out of their net and, and they have to learn to fly, that there's a sense of that. It says, you can do this. Try it. I believe in you. You've got the gifts of God. You got this thing. God is with you. Go for it. If you are connected with good spiritual leadership, it creates that soil that you can grow in and really begin to have something to offer the community and region around you because God has called you to be ministers. And so it's important for us to be committed to spiritual leadership. Where has God called you to be planted? And that's a good place for us to grow, to help and to learn and to, to um, see lives that are touched. All right. That's point number one. Point number two. Two are better than one. God designed for us to be in relationship. In Ephesians, what we're looking at, says he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. Everybody say fit together. All right. Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9 through 12. It says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If any of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together to keep warm, But how can one be warm alone? If one can overpower him who's alone, two can resist him. A cord of three uh, strands is not quickly torn apart. The Bible tells us in Genesis even that he says it's not good for man to be alone. Sometimes people have applied this to marriage that everybody's supposed to be married uh, or that uh, men are supposed to be married because they can't successfully live a single life. It's not good for man to be alone. Uh, or people that believe that I said it like a joke, but uh, 
the, the real thing of what Genesis said here and, and is said in Ecclesiastes uh, is that it's not good for people to be solitary, to live. It doesn't mean that everybody is supposed to be in romantic relationships. It's talking about not being disconnected from people. We are designed to be in relationship with each other. I think of the Good Samaritan, and my heart breaks on this. If you're familiar with the Bible, Jesus told a story about the Good Samaritan where this guy, he was a Jew, fell down and was beaten up and robbed. And uh, you know the story where several people walked by and didn't help him out. And then a Samaritan, uh, who if you know the, the cultural context, were despised by the Jews. Uh, this guy, a Samaritan, saw him and helped him out. And there's a lot you can draw from that, but specifically what we're looking at today is there are many people that are living their lives like that first Jewish guy where they're alone and they're hoping when they're hurt somebody notices them and stops to help them out. Uh, and unfortunately, many times people don't stop. They keep going. And some of this is because we've isolated ourselves. You know, we have the most socially connected group of people on the planet through our social media, and some of the greatest percentages of depression and isolation in history. Isn't that amazing? We can have a thousand friends on our social media page and not know any of them. that, let me just say it this way, God's plan for us is for us to be connected with other people, where we help each other out, where we mourn together when someone's going through a difficult time, we celebrate together, where we grow together. We were designed to be in relationship, to be connected with each other. God has always designed for people to be connected with people and to be able to, from that place, see God's plan and purposes unfold in people's lives. We're going to look more in detail about that uh, in the weeks ahead, about how being in relationship with each other grows. But I want to take a moment today and show you my response to this particular passage, recognizing my responsibility as spiritual leadership and also the plan of God for us to be connected in some, in some way, and that's a place where spiritual ma uh, maturity happens. That's where uh, we grow in love and where we're built up, encouraged, and that kind of thing. Uh, recognizing my responsibility of that, uh, I can't make that happen but what I want to do is follow a plan of God to provide a platform where connection can happen. And so I'm excited today to uh, introduce this month our new connection groups. And I want to take a few minutes and introduce those because these are places where we can be connected together. And so this is a powerful new strategy in... Um, it is this month only that you can sign up for these. These are going to be closed groups. I want to explain how they work and the mindset behind them. So many times, our under, a lot of churches have small groups, you know, that basically where you meet at home. Some of them have cell groups or they have uh, uh, life, you know, life groups or growth groups or um, house church groups or, all, you know, everybody's meeting groups. And so I have all these different kind of groups. And so this right here is our own particular, this is a, a particular model of meeting in homes. And we call it our connection group. Now, our church groups many times uh, are designed in a way that makes sense to people who've been in church for a long time. But are not designed in a way for people who have never been to church. Or So, so let's say this, that part of our focus as a ministry are two groups of people. Everybody say two groups. Okay. One is the unchurched, and the other is the de-churched. Unchurched are people that have never gone to church before. The de-churched are people that maybe they did go before, but they're not going somewhere now. 
Okay, unchurched and dechurched. We have a lot of dechurched people in our region. Okay, and so the way a lot of groups are, are set up, home groups are set up, is they're open where people can come and they run forever. So there's no particular time off except around some holidays. So you have these groups that never end and you're supposed to invite new people to come to their groups. How many have gone to groups like that? Okay, so... Here's the problem with those groups. They're, they go against the way the culture functions, the way the culture thinks. And so we're wanting to take de church and unchurched people and say, come into our culture, understand it, embrace it, and thrive in it. And it doesn't typically work very well. What actually would be good is the Bible calls us to be missionaries, to go into the world, engage the world where it's at with the gospel. And so one way that we're doing that is utilizing some of the things that are in the culture so that there's a connection point between the culture and the gospel that is meaningful to that person. Okay, I know that's abstract, but that's, that's the mindset behind what we're doing. Okay, and so here's the deal. If, you have, if I went over to uh, Home Depot and I said, I really messed up some woodworking I was doing, uh, do you have any woodworking classes? And they said, yeah, we have woodworking class. It meets on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Awesome. Uh, what's taught there? I don't know. It changes every week. Okay. But it's always about wood. Okay. Well, how long does it go? Forever. There is no end to this woodworking class. <laughs> really? Well, I'm not going to that. <laughs> Okay, and so you, this is a mindset sometimes of, uh, of our, our culture. Let me say it this way. Our culture is used to learning about specific things. They think in semesters. You think about that. You grew up in semesters. Things happen with a start and a finish. And so we invite people to come to our never-ending group. Come and learn. It's always about Jesus, and it never ends. And we never end on time. And it, so that's one thing we have going against us. We actually are trying to get them to come into a culture they're not familiar with. All right? So what we're introducing with this particular thing is semesters. We're going to have three semesters a year. And they have a start and they have a finish. They are closed groups. Here's the other deal is closed groups actually function better than open groups for new people to come in because... People don't want to come into an environment where people have been building lots of relationship for a long time. They feel awkward. But when you say, you know what, in three weeks, this is going to be done, and we're going to be starting a new one, and you can sign up for a group then. Awesome. They're used to that. They go to college. They can't go into a college course somewhere, most colleges, anytime you want to, unless it's some online thing, and that's not where connection happens. I'm talking about going somewhere in person. You have to wait for the next semester, right? They're used to waiting for when things start. It has a start and end point. And so what we're going to be doing is having semesters where they run about 10 weeks long. That's it. Just 10 weeks, and then you're done. Then you could pick another one. We'll have about a month off, and you could pick another one to go to. Or you could pick the same one to go to, whatever. Okay, and the way that these grow is actually by growing leaders inside of it and starting a new group instead of our mindset has been invite more people until you can't fit anybody else in your house and then you multiply, which they try to use a positive spin on dividing up a group. If you're familiar with some of the church things I'm, I'm speaking about, let's grow to we're, we're too big and then we divide, but we don't want to say divide, so we'll call it Multiply. Well, really, you're taking a group of people that are there, and you're splitting them off and starting another group. So then they start their own group, okay? So here's the, the way that our connection groups are going to grow is because we're actually going to raise up new leaders and have new groups that are started and have more opportunity for new things to begin, all right? Here's another thing. We, divide, we make groups. I'm talking about get, getting connected, Okay? We have a mindset of home groups that the purpose of them is for everybody to share their feelings. Everyone's going to get close and know all the intimate details of their lives. All right. Here's a matter of truth for you guys. 
Guys don't want to do that. And there might be some ladies that don't want to do that either. But I'm just saying, guys don't want to do that. All right. So here's part of uh, some of the training I've been receiving along the way is if you design home groups around men, then women will come. If you design groups around women, men won't come. (laughs) In other words, if you design it in a way that a man would feel comfortable there, then a woman would feel comfortable too. If you design it in a way that only women would feel comfortable, then a guy would not. So we have put on top of home groups an expectation of intimate relationships and everybody opening up all the time and sharing the deep things that are going on in their lives. Guess what? That scares away de-churched and unchurched people. If you've been in a church for a long time and you're craving some type of deeper relationship, then you're excited about it. The people that are not excited about it are the people we're supposed to be reaching. Okay, hope this is making sense. (laughs) All right, we want to create an environment where our good intentions become reality. And our good intentions are that we're reaching the unchurched and the de-churched of our region and loving on them. Okay, so if we design how we function around only those who have been in church for 20 years are the ones that are comfortable in it, it's not going to happen. They'll remain good intentions. You guys okay? All right, so real relationships are not built in home groups. Real relationships are built one-on-one in other venues. What we want to do is create a, a place where connection can happen, and then if you want to ask somebody else out and go play tennis together or you, you find whatever you know, your common interest is and you guys go do something out on your own, that's where a relationship as far as like deep intimacy and connection is going to happen. Okay? It doesn't happen by meeting once a week. It happens by building some history together. All right? And so we want to create an environment that's safe for unchurched and de-churched people to come in. You're not going to have to come in and spill your guts every time you come and be, you know, everybody's going to be mushy all the time. doesn't mean there would never be times where you share your heart and you guys cry together. That's not what I'm trying to suggest. But I'm saying that we make it a requirement. Come to our small group and build intimate relationships. That scares people. Okay? Especially introverts. <laughs> feel pressured, like I am required to build an intimate relationship with you, okay? Come to a connection group and have fun and meet people along the way and grow spiritually. That's what I'm offering you. You may meet people you really connect with and build intimate relationship with, but you're not pressured to do that. I am not requiring you to be best friends with everybody in your group. I'm asking you to have fun, to meet some people, and to uh, grow spiritually. That's what I'm asking. If you connect with somebody else deeper than that, go for it. Okay? That's the mindset. I want you to understand the mindset behind what we're doing. It goes counter what we're taught in churches. We're taught we're supposed, you go to small groups to build intimate relationships. Sounds really good for the person who wants that very scary for everybody else. Okay? <laughs> okay. If you guys got questions, you can ask me after the service. We're, I just want to understand where we're going as a church. These are our, our groups that we're starting. So you have your cards you're given, our connection cards. If you flip them over to the back, we're introducing three specific groups. All right? One group Starting going left to right here is a men's poker night with me. <laughs> poker with the pastor. I'm going to see how many emails I get about this from people. So uh, the, the reason I'm having a men's poker night is because I want to, if anyone doesn't have a card, raise your hand. We want to get, they we have a couple over here, a few. 
The reason I'm having a poker night is to have a venue uh, where it's fun, where discipleship and fun can happen. So I'll just read these. Calling the men, discipleship and fun. We'll be looking at the book of Colossians and playing poker. It will be a great place for men to grow spiritually in an environment that is casual. I want to encourage you to reach out to someone who is not attending church for this group. Uh, and so this is a group we're going to be able to sign up for the, this month. And maybe there's some people at your work or other places that are, are some men that uh, are de-churched or unchurched and say, hey, there's a, a men's poker night with a pastor. It's a place you can get, get to know the pastor. It's really casual. And they're going to play some poker. Let them know about it um, and see if they want to come. So uh, that's happening. You have the dates there. I don't have a location yet. I want to meet on this side of the river, uh, but I don't know where yet. So as we get closer, I'll need to be figuring that out. All right, so that's one. Another one here moving over is strengthen yourself in the Lord. This is uh, with uh, Ward and Ellen Hall, and they're going to be going through a fantastic book. And uh, the author of that book is a pastor in California. His name is Bill Johnson. And he, he says, one of the things I've heard him say is there are two things every Christian needs to master. One is being unoffendable, which Pastor Mike could help us get that set up last week. If you didn't hear that, I encourage you to go on our YouTube channel and listen to it. The second thing is how to strengthen yourself in the Lord. If you master those two things, you'll go a long way in the things of God, according to him. And so anyway, here's a book he wrote on strengthening yourself in the Lord. They're going to be going through it. Really, really great stuff. Uh, this right here is open to anyone, and so you know both genders are welcome to that. And uh, I encourage you guys to get plugged into that and invite some people to it. It's going to be really, really good. And the halls are just fantastic people anyway, so you guys are going to have a great time with that. Moving farther over to the right is a woman, women's connection group. It's called Women Kick Butt. Okay? This is the name. We don't have a, the name of it here, but the name of this is Women Kick Butt. And it's an acronym for Belittling Ungodly Thieving Thoughts. B-U-T-T. Belittling. We're going to be dealing with those belittling ungodly thieving thoughts. Say that three times fast. It's easier to say but. So what you're going to do is kick those things out of your life, ladies. Yeah, it's really, really good because the way you think will determine how you live. And so if you're believing lies, then you'll be living a lie. And so uh, my wife, co-pastor, Pastor Micah over here, she's going to be leading this ladies' group. So I'm leading, leading a men's group. She's leading a ladies' group. And hers is meeting on Tuesdays. The halls in the middle here, they are meeting on Mondays. And mine over to the left there is meeting on Wednesdays. And you have the dates where they start and end listed there. Here's all you have to do to sign up for a group. By the top of it, you check it off. And you check that off. You want to take the front of it here, and you want to fill the front in. If you are a family member of the church, then you'll want to check off family, put your name in. Uh, if you're here for a second time, fill in the other information on the front because uh, we want to send you a gift from the church as well, okay? And um, we mail those out. We also email those out. And for those that are first or second time guests, if you go... If you utilize our, our email we sent to you and do a survey, then you are given a $5 gift certificate to Starbucks. And we also mail you a gift from a church as well. So fill that out. And when we receive the offering in just a, a few moments, well, you can just drop that in there. Uh, and then at the bottom we have, if there's, you have anything you'd like us to be in prayer for you about, please write that in, into there. We'd like to be able to pray with you. So these are going to be here. We're going to be handing these out each week. And also, you can meet with the leaders and speak to them. What is this about? And any questions you have, you can talk to them. Uh, but once this time is done, the groups are going to be closed. 
Okay, so if you're interested in joining a group, this will, you'll want to sign up for the group and uh, get connected with those. Everybody say, get connected. All right, good. Gonna, we're going to receive this morning's offering, and I want to close in prayer. And we're going to go into our afterglow service. As we go into that, I'm going to um, serve communion as we go into our afterglow service, but I'll do an official close since we're already at 11.30. Anyone who wants to stay and receive communion and worship, you're welcome to stay for that. <clears throat> we're going to receive this morning's tithe and offering. If you want to utilize an envelope, would you raise your hand, please, and we'll get those out to you. Raise your hand, they'll get it. We have some hands up looking for envelopes. We can get those out. If you want to have your information on file, we also have a sheet of paper. You can do that where you don't have to fill out. If you're using a credit card, you don't have to fill it out each week. Even if it's different amounts, you can still uh, utilize that paper. Just ask one of the ushers for that, and they can give you one of uh, our, I don't even know what you call them, credit card authorization papers. And uh, we'll have that on file so you don't have to fill them out each time. So, the next things that we have coming up as a church, we have our uh, movie theater things that are going out. We have, we're going to try to maybe buy down people's tickets or something like that. We also have Jubilee Day that's coming up. We're uh, purchasing two booth spots for that. And uh, we're going to give more information about that if you want to get involved. We had a great time with that last year, loving on our community. And... Um, if you want to get involved with that, those are all some things that are coming up financially that we're going to be investing in. And this is besides our normal stuff that we do. Uh, I took some of our $25 gift cards out a little uh, this past week, gave them out to a few people, and they just were beside themselves. No one had ever done anything like that for them before. And so we just continue to see in our region, we're sowing this in. We're sowing love into our region. And we're going to see a harvest of people that encounter God's love, come and follow him, and some of them are going to come and join our church family along the way. And so we want to pray into this. I want to thank you for giving and being a part of what God is doing here. Yeah. Yep, I'm going to announce. We've got a couple announcements while we're receiving the offering. All right, if you guys would come up, I'm going to pray, and then we'll receive the offering. Even if you're not checking off a connection group this week, you're still considering which one you have questions or whatever, please fill out your name or information on the front. Put a prayer request on there and drop it in for us, please. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for designing us to be connected with each other. And so as we go deeper into being connected, we thank you that you have a plan. And we want to do things according to your plan. We don't want to mess up the fan blades of our lives. But we want to be people that hear from you and live the life that Jesus died for us to live. And so we say yes to that. I bless every person here. I bless them and pray that they are connected. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to receive this offering. While we're receiving that, I have a couple of announcements First of all, pay very, very close attention to these announcements. Next Sunday, this parking lot is going to be unavailable. Uh, so what's happening is over the weekend, the, it's being, the parking lot is being redone. And where we're going to be able to park next week is if you're going out this door, there is the back lot of uh, a parking lot right up here just next to us, you can park there. Or you can park, well, no, I, I'm pretty sure this whole lot area is going to be closed off where even uh, this other business right over here is not going to be available. So this parking lot right here is going to be your best place to park at. And it's just the entrance before this one. Okay? So that's going to be happening then. We'll try to help, help with that next week. And a reminder to the ladies, all the ladies... On uh, tomorrow night at 6.30 is the ladies' night out at Tokyo Diner in Mechanicsburg. 
And so make sure you are aware of that. And last thing is I want to hand out some cards. These right here are invitation cards if, as you are loving on people in your community and blessing them. Uh, and they're like, man, are there more people like you? Absolutely. And you're able to hand them something and invite them over to join or at least come and visit um, Convergence Center. So these are just general ones that are made up, and they, they say get connected on them. All right, so I bless these in Jesus' name to be fruitful and multiply. All right, cool. And we are going to go into a time of worship here in just a minute. But um, Emmett, could you help me out with this? Hand some of these out, like three or so a person. Thank you. And I'm going to close in prayer. And anyone who wants to leave, you'll be welcome to. Then I'm going to bless uh, our communion. And we'll receive communion and have our afterglow extended time of worship. Thank you guys for your patience. I apologize for going a few minutes over today. It was a little long-winded, and I'm sorry. All right. So we're going to take these, I'm going to bless them, and then we'll do that. Heavenly Father, I thank you for communion. And according to your word, Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you, and this is my blood, which is shed for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Lord, according to the way that we received it, we bless it. In Jesus' name, I bless these elements as the body and blood of Christ. And I pray, Lord, that as we receive them, that we would have an encounter with you. I ask, God, that as we receive them, uh, bodies would be healed and lives would be touched. And our hearts would be centered, remembering, being focused on Christ all of this week. I bless every person here during this week. In Jesus' name, amen.